Hey guys, it's me, Flowman from Flowman Kicks Ass 12. And guess what? We got a treat for you guys today. I'm gonna be unboxing another game. That's right, another one. <laughs> and you better wondering what I'm about to grab this time. This time I got a brand new game that I very much enjoy. I've been playing it for a while now. I got the new game. Ticket to Ride. It's not that new, but whatever. New to me. And whatever, I'm about to unbox the game. I've been playing it for a while now, but whatever. It's time I'm going to show you how to play, give it a review, blah, 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 and just show you everything that's inside. Let's get started. <laughs> Well, here, we got the game box of Ticket to Ride. This is the original version. There are other versions such as Europe, Italy, uh, not Italy, India, some other European countries, and Asia. But I'm just looking up the original, which is United States and Southern Canada. Um, wow, well, it looks weird on my camera. It, everything looks backwards, but it doesn't show up as backwards when I, when I look at it. On my computer. But anyway, as we unbox the game, first thing we see are the very short and very well done instructions of Ticket to Ride. There you go. Full color demonstrations. And it's very short, only about a, two pages long. And the next thing we see in this game box is a very well done game board. Mm. My house lighting is horrible, but wherever. I think this looks just fine. I have the camera angle kind of well. So you'll put this aside. And it looks like we're missing a color. Nice. Oh, there it is. Must have fell out. I was just transporting the game, so... Whatever. I just noticed that. But anyway, when you look at this game board right here... You notice that it's a very, very high quality game board. You notice it's very thick. One thing I've noticed the first time when I open up this game is that most games, um, you see the underside first. It'd be very, like, and this would fold the other way. But it's open up um, to the inside first. There we go. And you notice it's very good quality wood. All the colors and everything on here are very, very well done. You know, I'll, I'll free cam this now. Yeah, this is a um, probably one of my favorite game boards of any game I've ever played. This whole thing um, was done very nicely by Days of Wonder. Okay, first thing we are going to talk about is how to win the game. Okay, so in order to win the game, you need to get the most points of any player. Okay, this is a two to five player game, so you're going to have a lot of competition, possibly, or maybe it's one other person. You use these markers right here to show your score on the board in the game. And you move them around this track right over here to, you know, show your points. It goes up to 1 to 100. A lot of times they go over 100 to win, and etc. Okay, another thing you're going to have to know to play this game, my cat's distracting me, is how to use cards. In this game, there are many different colors for routes. Yellow, blue, black, white, etc. And in order to claim those routes, you're going to need the exact number of cards that there are spaces on each route. Like here there are three blue, you need three blue cards in order to claim that route and gain the points that that route gets. 
and on each turn you can either pick up two cards from here or here and I'm gonna get to the other two options that you can do on your turn later because I tried earlier to explain all at once and it failed anyway you can hold an unlimited amount of cards um, in a single hand and you never have to get rid of them. No one can steal your cards, no one can make you draw two or lose two like in Uno or an other game. But there's one card that if it were in the place of the screen and you wanted that wild, it can be used as anything. Let's say I wanted to claim a three pink route or purple, magenta, and or something like that. I would need. No, I would. I don't think there are any three pinks. Oh, here they are. If I wanted to claim this one right here, I need three pinks. There's only two pinks up there. I can only claim. I can only take two of these since they are right here. But next time. If no other player does claim this card right here, I could take this card if no one else has taken it. But instead of taking two cards that turn, this would be my only card I could take. Now, if this card were here on the top draw pile, and I t pick it up, that does not mean I ha this is the only card I can take. Since no one else knows, you can take a second card. And I got a green. And that's basically what happens with the wild card. Wilds are, there are more wilds than, an, than any other color. Only by two. There's 14 wilds and 12 of every, every other color. But there you go. And that's what, how cards work. Okay, gang. Let's talk about roots and root values. Now, now that you know how cards work, you're gonna need how no, you're gonna need to know how roots work on this board. The longer the root, the harder it is to claim, yet the benefits in the long run may or may not outdo the initial burden. Over here, you can see this. The scores are imprinted on the board. A root length of one, like Houston to Dallas, is worth one single point. A route of two, like so, is worth two points. And it could be in any color. I'm sorry, use two gray. You know, it could um, easily be two green up here or anything. And a root of three is worth four. Four is seven. 5 is 10, and 6 is 15. It's basically how it works. But, if I wanted to claim this root here, El Paso to Houston, I could not have 3 green for say, and put 1, 2, 3 trains down. You cannot do that. You have to have all six ready to go. All six cards. So you have to wait. And that also puts you in danger of someone else taking that route. And you'll be stuck with no time and a lot less trains to work with. And with these gray routes here, there are no gray cards. But you can use any color of your choice, including wilds just wilds or wilds plus other cards to claim a gray route and their point variations are still the same so this three routes from phoenix to la would still be worth four points but they all all the co cards have to be the same color or have to be you know two of the same color in a wild or two wilds and another color and that's the deal when it comes to route and route variations. Oh, there's also one thing I forgot about when it comes to train routes. These double routes, regardless if they're 
colored or gray, etc. These, um, if you're using a two to three player game, only one person may use a double route. For example, let's say I claimed Houston to Dallas. Some other player cannot claim that other part of that route right there. That is mine and mine alone. Now, if I had four to five players, these double routes could be used by two different players. So one player can claim pink. Is that pink? No, it's orange. First, could claim orange, and one player could claim white. And that is the part of the game which is most exciting because each game is completely different. One thing you're going to need for absolutely sure in this game is to know how to use destination tickets. Destination tickets are certain objectives that you need to complete before the end of the game. In this destination ticket, you must complete Duluth to Houston, which is worth 8 points. Now what this means is that you have to connect the city of Duluth way up in Minnesota, which is wrongly placed, to Duluth in all routes. So, I have to get all of this in order. I can go around, but it all has to be connecting by my colored frames. And I gain 8 points if I complete it. But if I fail and someone else finishes the game by having less than 2 or less trains, which ends the game, before I finish this route, I lose that many points. So that is a danger. But at the very beginning of the game, you you get three destination cards apiece. So one, two, and three. One thing, one thing you're going to need to know is which ones do you keep. In the beginning of the game, you have to keep at least two. But you do not have to keep um, three in the very beginning. So right here, I have Duluth to Houston, Kansas City to Houston, and Chicago to Santa Fe. Now, if you look at that on a board, Santa Fe is way over here, Chicago to over there. But Duluth to Houston and Kansas City to Houston are almost the exact same route. So you can keep those two because they're very, very similar. You can probably keep this route too because they'll be using some of the same parts of the route. That you, so they all kind of work very simultaneously. So... You gain all those points, and they become very easy. And that is a very huge strategy-making process. Now, a thing is that after you finish those three or two, you can get more. But that would be a full turn for you. You cannot get cards. You cannot play trains. This is all you can do. But let's say you get three really bad routes. Let's say you're all in the east over here. They're in all eastern routes. And you, you get um, Vancouver to Los Angeles, Helena to Phoenix, and some other really weird routes. You might be screwed. That's just right up there. So you have to be very careful when deciding to get new um, destination tickets. They can help you out, or they can not help you out. So I want to be very, very open and having a wide area, so I, there's a less chance of me being um, trapped. So, on your turn, there are three options. You can either pick up cards, pick up destination tickets, or play trains. Am I in order to play trains, if I wanted to play two pinks somewhere, let's say these were in my hand, I would discard them in a discard pile, then play two pinks somewhere. In this case, I decided to put them right... Yay, failure. Right there. 
and I would move my cursor up two. There you go. And that would be your entire turn. And you can you continue playing next turn. You get more cards, more destination tickets. But some people want to conceal their destination tickets to the very end. So you could have only 50 points, but have another 100 points in destination cards, um, which is very very unrealistic. But whatever. But some people also like the oh I finished so and so route. And they'd rack up the points, and everyone would see it, so they'd pray across. That's basically what my friends do. So that's how we play. But also, you don't have to do that, necessarily. But the game ends when your one player has two or less trains total. And after that, each player gets one turn after that. Including the player that has two or less trains. You only have 45 total, so you have to be very wary of what you're going to do. So there's a lot of strategy. Also, you don't have to start on any single point. There is no starting point. You can you can break up your trains. I could have some way over here. I could do that if I want. I could do whatever I want. So that's another strategy. Try, I would try to keep your trains connected in order to get your longest route bonus of 10 points. If all your trains are connected, whoever has the longest trains connected in a row without branching off the other direction, which you can do, gets the longest road card. And then the game ends after two people, after someone has less than two trains. I know I had a lot of information after that. So the last couple of things. You don't have to start anywhere. Particularly. And you don't have to go. From one city to another city. In a destination car in a certain way. And the longest road. And that's my unboxing. To Ticket to Ride. And that's basically my instructions to play. And now I'm going to give my review. Ticket to Ride is one of my favorite games, and I hope it will be your favorite soon, too. And I'd have to give this game a 9 out of 10, basically because after a while, you know, you can kind of predict people's strategy. You kind of start memorizing all the destination tickets, so then it becomes less and less fun. But there are ways to make it more fun. There are many, many expansions to Ticket to Ride. They're still making new ones. And there are other games, like in Europe. In India, of Europe and India, in um, Asia, and many other places, which add a little bit more twists to the game, make it a little bit harder to complete. There is an expansion to Ticket to Ride USA 1910, which has an expansion name, which adds a lot more destination tickets, a lot more things to avoid and block you and help you. There's a lot more things to do with Ticket to Ride. I don't think it'll end anytime soon. So I say get out there and get a Ticket to Ride. I'm not cheesy. Or am I? Ah!